ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد so last time then we started the chapter in al wasatiyah regarding the aqidah of ahl sunnah wal jama'ah upon the topic of seeing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can we ever see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the topic that we began with last time and you remember we mentioned the first two ayat that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala had mentioned the first one wujuhu yawma ibn nadira ila rabbiha nadira that the faces on that day will be uh, bright and radiant and glowing looking at their Lord. This was the first evidence he quoted from the Qur'an as an evidence that the believers will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day because the ayah says, وُجُوهُ يَوْمَ إِذٍ نَاظِرَةً إِلَىٰ رَبِّهَا نَاظِرَةً that they will be looking at their Lord. And as we mentioned, some scholars, they said their faces will be uh, bright and glowing and radiant and beautiful prior to seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning their faces shall be prepared upon that beauty to see Allah and others they said actually upon seeing Allah once they see Allah their faces turn into that beauty and that radiance and glowingness when they see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that is one of the evidences in the Quran that highlights the believers will see Allah in the afterlife because remember, the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah is that, in fact, before we get to the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah, there is this world and there is the afterlife. This world, this life, and the afterlife. There are some people who believe their aqidah is. That you cannot see Allah in this life, in this world, and you cannot see Allah in the afterlife either. So some people, their aqidah is you cannot see Allah at all, in this life, in this world, or in the afterlife. On the other extreme, there are some groups of innovation who believe their aqidah is that you can see Allah in the afterlife and you can see Allah. Now in this world we can see Allah. That is another extreme where they affirm seeing Allah in this world and in the afterlife. Whereas the other ones were rejecting seeing Allah in this world and the afterlife. So one group upon extremism in completely rejecting the fact that we can see Allah and the other group on the other extreme affirming we can see Allah in the afterlife but going into exaggeration and also claiming that we can see Allah in this world too. Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the Aqeedah is upon the balanced and middle path. We say that we can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the afterlife, 
but we cannot see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. Balanced between the groups of deviation who went astray to the extremes, we say we cannot see Allah in this world, but in the afterlife, then we can. That is the aqidah in a nutshell. And we're going to go through all these evidences now proving that and refuting those who claim that you cannot see Allah at all and also refuting those who claim you can see Allah all the time. In this world you can even see Allah. And they are basically who? Who says that? Generally it's the Sufis. The Sufis and their sects and the different branches of them, they claim that you can see Allah in this world as well. We said, the Aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah, as we will prove from these evidences, we cannot see Allah in this world, only in the afterlife. But they say you can see Allah in this world too. And some of their evidences are, that their imams, mashaAllah, they see Allah already now. They believe some of their imams already see Allah now. They say their imams at night, Allah takes them to paradise. And their imams, they walk around in the gardens of paradise. And Allah takes them there into the jannat, into those gardens of paradise and they see Allah and then in the morning when they wake up they come back to this world again some of them said some of Ahlul Sunnah they said if that is the case that your Imams go to paradise at night and they are with Allah then why do they bother coming back to this earth in the morning better for them to stay there this is from their lies that their imams, they go to paradise at night and they walk in the gardens of paradise and they are with Allah and they see Allah. That is all from their lies. Allah is not seen by us in this world. But in the afterlife, then the evidences indicate we will. So we mentioned that first ayah. We also mentioned the second one. The second ayah, عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ يَنْظُرُونَ That they will be on their thrones, the people of paradise, the believers in that blessing. They will be on their thrones looking at everything in paradise. And all of those things they are looking at, it is a blessing for them. All of these blessings in paradise they will be seeing and the greatest of all of the blessings they will see, the greatest of the ni'am, of the blessings of paradise is to be able to see Allah. From all of the blessings of paradise, the greatest blessing is to be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when it mentions, عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ yanzurun. That they are on their, their seats, their thrones in paradise looking. Then the Sheikh mentioned here last time we quoted that from amongst those affairs, the greatest of what they will look at is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then we also mention the ayah where some of the people of innovation use to try and say, that we will not see Allah ever in this world or in the afterlife. Remember one group of the deviated people, they say you can never see Allah ever in this world or in the afterlife. And one of the evidences they used was, لا تدركه الأبصار وهو يدرك الأبصار That the eyesight cannot encompass Allah. But he encompasses and sees them all. The ayah tells us we cannot have idraq of Allah. We cannot encompass the sight of Allah. 
So they said, there you go, it's a proof. You can never encompass the sight of Allah. You can never encompass seeing Allah. Therefore, it's a proof you cannot see Allah. That's what they claimed. But as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said in other books, whenever an innovator brings you an authentic evidence to try and prove his deviation, then you can use the exact same evidence back on him. Why? How? Because if an innovator comes to you with an authentic evidence, an ayah for example, or a hadith that is sahih, authentic narration, and tries to prove his innovation with it, that must mean one thing. What must it mean? It must mean that this innovator, this misguided individual, is misinterpreting the evidence. Because the evidence would never prove innovation, obviously. An authentic evidence would never prove innovation. So if he's using an authentic evidence to try and prove his innovation, it must mean that he has misinterpreted the evidence he's using. So Shaykh al-Islam said, use the same evidence back on him by giving him the correct interpretation of it. And that will then prove to him that his innovation is false and the actual position is such and such. So when they used this ayah, لا تدركه الأبصار That the eyesights cannot encompass Allah. And they said it's a proof that Allah is telling us our vision cannot see him. We say to them, no. That is your misinterpretation of this ayah. In fact, the ayah is a proof that you will see Allah. Because al-idraq, encompassing something, comprehending something, that is different to basic vision. There are two things. Vision of something is one thing. Idraq, comprehension and uh, recognition of that thing fully is a different thing. And we mentioned the example the scholars they give, the moon and the sun. You can go out at night and you can see the moon. So you have vision. You have vision of the moon. But does that mean you have complete idraq? Of that. Does it mean you can now work out uh, what the diameter of the moon is by just looking at it? Can you now work out the mass of the moon by just looking at it? Can you work out the the circumference, the, the distance, all of those things? Can you give exact figures by just looking at it? You cannot. So even though you have vision of the moon, you have the sight the ru'ya is there, but the idraq is not necessarily there. You do not fully understand and comprehend the intricacies of the moon, even though you have sight and vision of it. So having sight and vision of something is one thing. Having the idraq, the comprehension and understanding of that is another. In this ayah, which of the two is being negated? لا تدركوهُ الأبصار. The eyesights will not encompass Allah. They will not have the idraq of Allah. What's being negated is the comprehension and encompassment of what you see. The actual ru'ya is not being negated. Allah isn't telling us you will not see Him. Allah is telling us you will not comprehend. This is a proof that you will see Allah. Because if we were not going to see Allah in the first place, then it wouldn't even be a a point to make 
that we are not going to comprehend the vision of Allah. If we weren't going to see Allah in the first place, then obviously we are not going to, going to see Allah in the first place. So then it wouldn't be, there wouldn't be the same point in this ayah. So the fact that Allah is negating the idraq must mean that the ru'ya is established. That Allah is telling us you will see him, but you won't fully comprehend seeing Allah because of the great might and majesty of Allah. You will not comprehend seeing Allah. You will not encompass the sight of Allah due to the great might and majesty of Allah. But you will have the basic vision and sight of Allah. So those are the evidences we mentioned so far. We got up to the third ayah. And that is where Shaykh al-Islam quotes, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا الْحُسْنَى وَزِيَادَةِ That those who do good, Allah tells us, those who do good, who are upon righteousness and goodness and piety and their actions, then for them, they will be given Al-Husna. Al-Husna is paradise. Those who do the goodness and the righteousness, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا Al-Husna. For them is paradise. Then Allah tells us, Ziyada That they will have paradise, and they will have a ziyada. What is the ziyada they will be given on top of the paradise? Seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do you know that? Mufassirun, all of you, mashallah. <laughs> Correct. So the ziyada is seeing a ziyada meaning an extra. The ayah is saying those who do goodness and righteousness, they will be given paradise and an extra. What extra could there be on top of being given paradise? In order to get the tafsir of the extra, this ziyada, this addition that those righteous people will be given, what is the methodology of acquiring tafsir? The first and the best method of tafsir is by the Quran. Al Quranu bil Quran. So if you come across an ayah in the Quran or a word in the Quran, you want to know what it means. The primary method and the most accurate method is to see if there are any other ayat in the Quran that talk about this ayah, that talk about this word. Maybe there's another ayah in the Qur'an that tells us what the ziyada is. So if you can find that, excellent. Tafsir of the Qur'an via the Qur'an. And there are books of tafsir written upon that methodology where the mufassirun did the tafsir of the Qur'an purely by other ayat of the Qur'an. Al-Imam Shaqiti has one and there are others as well. Tafsir of the Qur'an by the Qur'an. But what if you come across an ayah or something and you cannot find any other ayat in the Qur'an that give you the tafsir of this particular one you're looking for? Then you can go to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Maybe there is a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ explained that particular ayah. And in this case, that's exactly what exists. There is a hadith in Sahih Muslim where the Prophet ﷺ explained what the ziyadah is. If we didn't have a hadith either, then we could go to the next level that would have been the Sahaba, the Salaf, look at their statements. But in this case, for the ziyadah, we do actually have a hadith. And that is the hadith in Sahih Muslim, hadith of Suhaib, radiyallahu anhu. 
where the Prophet wasallam told them that the ziyadah is to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh al-Uthaymin says, فَفِي هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ دَلِيلٌ عَلَى ثُبُوتِ رُؤْيَةِ اللَّهِ مِنْ تَفْسِيرِ الرَّسُولِ عليه الصلاة والسلام This ayah therefore has within it an evidence upon seeing Allah from the tafsir of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم directly وَهُوَ أَعْلَمُ النَّاسِ بِمَعَانِ الْقُرْآنِ وَلَا شَكْ And he is the most knowledgeable of the people in regards to the meanings of the Qur'an without doubt وَقَدْ فَسَّرَهَا بِالنَّظَرْ إِلَىٰ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ وَهِيَ زِيَادَةً عَلَىٰ نَعِيمِ الْجَنَّةِ And the Prophet wasallam gave the tafsir that it is to see Allah and that is the addition on top of all of the other blessings in paradise. إِذَنْ فَهِيَ نَعِيمٌ لَيْسَ مِنْ جِنْسِ النَّعِيمِ فِي الْجَنَّةِ so this blessing that Allah will give the believers, that they can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is a different type of blessing compared to all the others in paradise. All the other blessings in paradise from the, the trees and the fruits and the rivers and all those things that are mentioned, they are one category of blessings. This is a separate type of blessing altogether, that they will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the greatest blessing the people of paradise will have. From all of those other blessings, seeing Allah will be the greatest of their blessings compared to everything else they have. So there is no equivalent to that blessing. There is no equivalent to the blessing of being able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I remember one of the scholars in Medina once saying as an example, he said, not not, uh, seeing Allah, but uh, uh, something similar in creation. He said, we haven't even seen the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, and he was very, very passionate about it and emotional he said if i if only imagine now if only we could be with the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we could be with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what our feelings would be and what our emotions would be if the messenger was here with us and that is here us with creation the messenger one of the creation but now in paradise seeing allah the creator of all of mankind and all that exists. So that is a clear ayah in the Quran as an evidence that we will see Allah. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةً And this is a very good evidence because if the people of innovation, they come along and they say this ayah is not a proof that you can see Allah because the ziyada means something else. We can say to them, who told you the ziyada means this or that, what you're claiming? They will tell you there, Imam, mashaAllah. The Imam told them. We said to them, our Imam told us that it means seeing Allah. And our Imam who told us is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He told us the ziyada is seeing Allah. Hadith in Sahih, Muslim. Go and look for yourself. So now they cannot override the tafsir of the Prophet sallallahu with the tafsir of the Imam. And this is where the people of innovation start to fall apart. They pick out evidences here, there, everywhere. But as soon as you start to combine the evidences together, you combine this ayah with the hadith in Sahih Muslim. You start bringing the evidences together, then their arguments can never hold weight. Because their arguments are always about one evidence here, one evidence there, one hadith here. They can't bring all of it together. Because if they bring all of it together, then their positions will be refuted. Their positions are based upon snippets, little bits of information here and there. Then the fourth ayah, 
Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah quotes, to prove that we will see Allah in the afterlife. The fourth ayah he mentions here, لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيد This is similar to the ayah that we just quoted. In this ayah, Allah says, لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا They, the inhabitants of paradise, will have whatever they desire. They will have whatever they desire. And then on top of that, after they've got everything they desire, Allah says, but even then, لَدَيْنَا مَزِيد We still have more to give them. After they've been given everything they desire, we still have more to give them. And it's mentioned in a hadith, أَنَّ رَجُلًا قَالَ لِلنَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ that a man said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulallah, Afil jannati khayl, O Messenger of Allah, Will there be horses in paradise? Fa'inni uhibbu al-khayl, For indeed I love horses. He said, O Messenger, Will there be horses in paradise? Because I love horses. فقال, uh, so the Prophet, he said to him, إِنْ يُدْخِلُكَ اللَّهِ الْجَنَّةِ فَلَا تَشَاءَ أَنْ تَرْكَبْ فَرَسًا مِنْ يَاقُوتَ حَمْرَاء تَطِيرُ بِكَ فِي أَيِّ الْجَنَّةِ شِئْتَ إِلَّا فَعَلْتَ The Prophet ﷺ mentions to him that when Allah enters you into paradise, then would you not want to ride a horse from the uh, uh, pearls or, or, or uh, ju- uh, jewelry, the, the, the precious metals, the horse made of those precious metals, of the red rubies, those kinds of uh, precious metals or precious uh, diamonds and things, a horse made of that, and it flies with you to wherever you want in paradise. So then that Bedouin said, Ya Rasulullah, Afil Jannati Ibl. O Messenger of Allah, are there camels in paradise? For inni uhibbu al-ibl, because I love camels too. قال يا عربي إن يدخلك الله الجنة أصبت فيها مشتهد نفسك ولذة عينك. The Prophet said, O oh Bedouin, if Allah enters you into paradise, you will have whatever your soul desires. You will have whatever your soul desires. And your eye finds pleasure in everything your soul desires and your eye finds pleasure in, you will have it all. فَإِذَا اشْتَهَى أَيَّ شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّهُ يَكُونُ وَيَتَحَقَّقُ So if he desires any affair, then it will occur and it will be actualized for him. حتى إن بعض العلماء قال Some of the scholars they mentioned لو اشتهى الولد لكان له ولد If a person in paradise desired to have a child Then he will be given a child He will have a child given to him فكل شيء يشتهونه فهو لهم Anything they desire they will be given it In Azukhruf 71 وَفِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِيهِ الْأَنفُسِ وَتَلَذُّ الْأَعْيُنِ وَأَنْتُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Within it is what the souls desire and what brings delight and pleasure to the eye and you will remain therein forever. So in this ayah Allah tells us لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا they will have whatever they want in it, in paradise. And then on top, وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيد And we will have extra, additional, on top of everything they desire. Even more we will have for them. 
on top of everything they desire. يعني أن الإنسان إذا شاء شيئا يعطى إياه ويعطى زيادة كما جاء في الحديث الصحيح في آخر أهل الجنة الدخولة يعطيه الله عز وجل نعيما ونعيما ويقول رضيت يقول له لك مثله وعشر أمثاله فهو أكثر مما يشاء So a person in paradise will have everything he wants and then he'll be given even more on top of what he wanted and desired and it's mentioned in a hadith how the last person who enters paradise, he will be given the blessing and the blessings that he is given one after the next until that person says, I am satisfied. He has all of the blessings given to him. He says, that's plenty. I'm satisfied with all of these blessings. But then it will be said to him, rather for you is the likes of these blessings and ten times more. Ten times more. So even more than what he desired, ten times more he is given. So here in this ayah, it's the same as the last one, the mazid. It is understood in the same way as the ziyadah, meaning that they will have everything they desire and then the extra on top, which is that they will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those are four ayat so far, four ayat so far that clearly highlight that the believers will see Allah. The references for all four of those ayat, the first one, 22 and 23, ila rabbiha nadira, al qiyamah, 22 and 23. The second ayah Ibn Taymiyyah quoted, was from Al-Mutaffifin 24, that they will be on their thrones looking at all of the blessing and the greatest of all of that will be that they see Allah. And the third ayah that Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned was Yunus 26, those who do the good and righteousness will have the paradise and more. And the fourth one that we just mentioned here as a uh, the fourth ayah quoted by Shaykh al-Islam, Surah Qaf, ayah 35. لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيد They will have whatever they desire within it and we have more. Those are four clear ayat highlighting that the believers will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the afterlife. Then there is a fifth ayah that some of the scholars use as well. A fifth ayah. And this fifth ayah, it was quoted by some of the scholars like Al-Imam Shafi'i and others also as an evidence that you will see Allah. But how is this one an evidence? Al-Mutaffifin ayah number 15. Al-Mutaffifin ayah number 15. كَلَّا إِنَّهُمْ عَنْ رَبِّهِمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ لَمَحْجُوبُونَ Nay, they will be veiled from seeing their Lord on that day. They'll be blocked, veiled. Veiled from seeing Allah on that day. Blocked, a cover. So how is that an evidence that you're going to see Allah? When Allah is telling us they will be veiled from seeing Allah on that day. Fasirun. <laughs> huh? How is this an evidence? Aha. So this ayah is about the kuffar. Allah is telling us that the kuffar on that day, they are going to be blocked from seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are going to be veiled, mahjubun, from seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if the kuffar are going to be blocked, then that must mean that the believers are not blocked. Must be. Because if the believers were going to be blocked and veiled as well, then they'd be the same as the kuffar. And that cannot be the case. The believers are honored in the afterlife. 
Allah tells us the kuffar are blocked. And this is what they call in usul al-fiqh, the mafhum al-mukhalafah. Where the ayah is telling you one thing, and therefore, from that, you can deduce the ruling of the opposite. The ayah is telling you the kuffar are going to be blocked from seeing Allah, because they are disgraced on that day. Therefore, you can deduce, you can extract from that the opposite, which is that the believers won't be blocked, because they are different and opposite to the kuffar. The believers are honored on that day. And if the believers were not going to be honored, they were going to be blocked as well, just like the kuffar, then they would be equal to the kuffar on that day. And that is not the case. They are honored and the kuffar are dishonored. The kuffar are blocked. The mafhum al mukhalafah that the believers will not be blocked therefore. So that is another evidence that can be used to highlight that the believers will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day. A Shaykh al says, this is actually a very strong evidence. He says it's an actual strong evidence. Because the fact that the kuffar are blocked is because Allah's anger is upon them. But the believers, they are the ones whose Allah's pleasure is upon them. And so there has to be that distinction between them. فَهَذَا قَوْلُ أَهْلِ السُنَّةِ فِي رُؤْيَةِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَأَدِلَّتِهُمْ So this is the statement, this is the position of Ahl Sunnah regarding seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those evidences in the Qur'an are clear. Nobody can reject those ayat, they are clear. Highlighting to us that you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but then what's another one of the evidences some of the people of innovation used to say, no, you cannot see Allah because even Musa alayhi salam, when he requested to see Allah, Allah told him, Lantarani. There's the ayah. وَلَمَّا جَاءَ مُوسَى لِمِيقَاتِنَا وَكَلَّمَهُ رَبُّهُ قَالَ رَبِّ أَرِنِي Anzur ilayk. Musa alayhi salam, he said to Allah, O oh Allah, allow me to see you. Rabbi arini anzur ilayk. My Lord, show me, allow me to see you. Musa alayhi salam said to Allah, tarani. Allah said in the Quran, you will not see me. Lan tarani, lan harfu nafi, negation in Arabic, you will not see me, a negation, and it's a future tense negation as well, that you're not going to see me, not now, not afterwards, you're not going to see me, lan tarani. So now then, how are you going to explain this? Musa alayhi salam asked Allah to allow him to see him. Allah said, Lan tarani, you're not going to see me. It's simple. Upon the aqeedah of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, there's no problem here. Where was this when Musa alayhi salam asked Allah? Was it in the afterlife or was it here in this world? In this world, we already know in this world our aqeedah is we cannot see Allah. But in the afterlife you can. Here, this was in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, 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 mentioned to Musa alayhi salam that he cannot see him meaning in this world right now and there are evidences to prove that in case somebody says well how can you say that what if it means this world and in the afterlife because it says lan lan in the Arabic language is harfu nafyin wa stiqbal an nafi fil mustaqbal future tense negation 
So if you say, Lan Tarani, what's the translation of that? What's the translation? You won't see me. Yani, what if I say you will never see me? Lan Tarani. If I say Lan Tarani, does it mean Lan Tarani Abadan? No. So some of the people of innovation from their lack of understanding Arabic, they say Lan is Linafi Al Mu'abbat. That it means you will never ever see me. And that is not proven in the Arabic language whatsoever. Lan does not indicate a negation into the future tense forever. If I say in Arabic, Lan Tarani, it doesn't mean you're never, ever, never, ever going to see me. It just means you're not going to see me into the future, maybe for months, maybe for years. But it doesn't mean never, ever. That's proven in the Arabic language. So when Allah said to Musa, salam, Lan Tarani, it does not mean you will never ever see me. So that means the negation is up to a certain point, but not forever. What is the certain point the negation goes up to from the other evidences we know? Up until the day of judgment. Then in the afterlife, the negation no longer applies. And there's a hadith which proves that too. The Prophet ﷺ said, لَن تَرَوْ رَبَّكُمْ حَتَّى تَمُوتُوا You will not see your Lord until you die. Proving you will not see your Lord while you are alive, whilst you are in this world. But when you die, you are now in the afterlife. You will not see your Lord until you die. So in this world, you will not see Allah. But when you die, now... That negation is gone. You can and you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the afterlife. Uh, it's mentioned, as uh, Shaykh al-Ithameen quotes here, about the uh, grammatical evidence the people of innovation try to use about lan. Lan does not mean never ever. It's a future tense negation, but not never ever. Ibn Malik, he mentioned, وَمَنْ رَأَ النَّفْيَ بِلًا مُؤَبَّدًا فَقَوْلُهُ ارْدُدْ وَسِوَاهُ فَعْضُدًا That whomsoever thinks that the lan is a negation to eternity, then rebuke his statement and take besides it and stick to that. What is the other opinion, the correct understanding besides that? That lan is a future tense negation, but not for ever. Ibn Malik, who is famous for his knowledge of Arabic language, he says that is where you stick to. That's the correct understanding. As for the one who says lan means never ever, then they have no understanding of the Arabic language.